time now. I did it! The power of 1.21 gigawatts at work! That was pretty amazing! Amazing, amazing, ama amazing! The flux capacitor is more than amazing! Hey! What are you two Nimrods doing now? Well, Larry, as per usual, I've had a stroke of genius. People want to see us test the scene from Back to the Future 3. Yeah, I, I don't think so. Eh, what do you mean you don't think so? It's a good Western test. It is, but there's a lot of safety concerns involved in that, and it's not worth all that effort for just one test. Now, if we were doing multiple tests, maybe I'd be interested. Like what, Larry? Oh, I don't know. Like, uh, how about if a flask will stop a bullet and save your life? Or, or better yet, a pocket watch, right? Or maybe take a Hawken rifle and shoot a ramrod out of it, like, uh, you know, Clark Gable did in Across the Wide Missouri. Those are good tests. Great Scott! Don't move, Larry! I'll be right back! What took you so long? <gasps> I went the wrong way. <laughs> My bad. Don't move, Larry. Nimrod's doing now. Better. Oh, hi, Larry. I was just thinking we could test the improvised body armor from Back to the Future 3 and, oh, I don't know. Will a whiskey flask stop a bullet or even a pocket watch? Or maybe we could fire the ramrod out of the Hawken rifle the way Clark Gable did in the, across the wide Missouri. You know, those are actually pretty good tests. I had a feeling you would say that. On this episode of Hollywood Weapons, we're going back to the future to test more stuff from Westerns. Okay. We're gonna put Hollywood to the test. This is Hollywood Weapons. Now, we had some Old West fun a few seasons ago, and we answered some burning questions like, will a horse trough be good cover, and so on. But a lot of you buckaroos have written in with more suggestions, so we decided to saddle up. We're gonna test some more things from your favorite Westerns. Yippee-ki-yay! First test. All right, in most Westerns, a gunfight ensues between the good guys and the bad guys, and invariably, something happens which makes us think twice. Like? Will the whiskey flask stop a bullet? Or will Marty McFly's potbelly stove door stop a bullet? Hold on now. Oh, that's Larry. He's already at the range. I got to get out of here. Do me a favor. Watch this thing. Don't go anywhere. Come on. Where am I going to go? Or when? Howdy, partner. Don't you think that partner is a little bit of a strong word to describe our relationship? Larry, come on. We still have so many things to test from Weston. We probably won't get through them today. That's true. We have quite a few of them, and they're actually pretty good tests. Starting with? Well, the most popular is if you happen to have <laughs> a whiskey flask on you, and it happens to be sitting in a front vest pocket, will the bullet be stopped by the whiskey flask and save your life? OK, great. A life saved, yes, but a tragedy nonetheless. That's true. And you can see here, we've removed the back of the vest, so we'll actually be able to see if there's any kind of penetration in the ballistic gel. Good idea. Want to do it? Giddy up. All right. Hey, I like what you did there. Weapon of choice, sir. OK, weapon of choice, of course, is the Colt 1873 single action. This particular one has a 
five and a half inch barrel on it. It was known as the artillery model. That round is the one, uh, that's the round that won the West, isn't it? Larry? Right, 45 Colt. And as you can see, this is somewhat of a Western load, soft, exposed lead bullet. Right. It's actually going to pancake, hopefully, pretty good on that blast. So we might be successful okay. in this right. test. We ready to go? You have five shots there. It is windy. And fire when ready. If you're just tuning in, we're testing stuff from your favorite westerns, and I just shot a guy in the flask. Let's see what happened. And fire when ready. Hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. You okay. gotta got save the whiskey. We actually got full penetration. Look at that. Okay, so this flask actually, it did not stop it at all. I mean, that's perfect penetration through the front, exit wound out the back. It's straight and, out the and back. And there's no deviation. You'd have thought that this lead bullet would have fragmented when it hit the metal. Went right through. You can see there's a clean entry wound, a clean exit wound, and there's no deviation on the flight path of the bullet. So so now the dude has a mortal wound and he's going to be thirsty. That's wrong. Exactly. All right, so I think it's safe to say this is this is a fail test. A, a full flask is not going to save you from that bullet. Correct. Definitely a fail on this one. All right, man, so what's next? Well, the next most requested for test is needing a pocket watch. Do you still have that pocket watch that you uh, carry around sometimes? I might. So I have it for a second? So what people really want to see is if we put the pocket watch in the pocket, will that actually stop a bullet? So I have this orange dot here for you to aim at. That's where the pocket watch is. And I hope you're not too attached to this pocket watch. I grabbed it off his desk anyway. Okay, you have one round in there, same 45 Colt that we used before. Now let's see what happens. I felt like I was where I needed to be. All right. I mean, the chain's broken. And by the way, there's no bullet coming through here. And so the that's chain's crazy. broken, so, oh, oh yeah. Oh man, look at this. It dented it. There's no exit on the back side of it. Come on, man. It's got to be there. You've got to have a bullet. Look at this. There's, there's like gears <laughs> and pieces. You ruined the watch, Larry. But if there's no, if there's no nope, exit, the bullet's got to be in here somewhere. Oh, it's in the lining. I just heard something hit the wood. It's in the lining. Get out of here, man. Yeah. Cut that. <laughs> oh, look at that. <laughs> Come on, no way! The almost pristine bullet. You can see where it impacted the watch there. Dude, I'm really surprised the, the, the watch stopped that. Um, I wouldn't walk around with a pocket watch instead of body armor, <laughs> but in this particular case, it probably would have saved the guy's life. A surprising and wildly successful test, man. Yes, absolutely. Good shoot. Stuff you requested from your favorite westerns, and we've had some success and some failures. But now it's Marty McFly's big moment. So, as per your request, we're testing a scene from Back to the Future 3 where Marty McFly pulls a Clint Eastwood. He did pull a Clint Eastwood, yeah, didn't yes, he? He did, yes. yeah. In Fistful of Dollars, of course, Clint took a piece of steel and he hid it up underneath his poncho. In our movie, Marty took the door off of a potbelly stove and tied it up under his poncho. Well, I think it's fair to say, since Marty McFly got that idea from Clint Eastwood, you could say that he did the first Hollywood weapons test. 
You could say that, but I'm not going to. Yeah. Anyway, you can see here we have our poncho. We have our cast iron <laughs> Legit. door off of a stove. We've also exposed the back of the gel here. Okay. So if we do get penetration, we'll be able to catch it on camera. Uh, OK, I got it. Center mass. Let's go. Let's go. All right, boss man, what are we shooting? Well, once again, we're going to be shooting the Western Caliber 45 with a lead bullet out of the Colt single action, 1873. We'll load up one round for you. I'm your Huckleberry. I know it's not the movie, but I want to say that. Just shoot the gun. All right, I hit him pretty okay, center. OK, well, think. clearly center mass. You got a real good bullet hole right there. Let's, take, Let's a take a look and see what we got. OK. okay. Whoa. Whoa. That looks crazy, man. Yeah, now remember, this is cast iron, and it tends to shatter it's like brittle, this. brittle, yeah. So we've shot through the poncho, through the cast iron, and there's some little scratches and scrapes here and everything. There's a little bit of fragment. A little bit of frag, but there's no bullet going through the guy. So this went from a fatal wound to one that he's going to survive. So I think this is a pretty darn successful test. Yeah, I mean, he's maybe got a broken rib. He's knocked right. out a little bit. He's winded. I mean, Marty winds up on the ground, right? But right. he does get back up. And after all, if Clint Eastwood did it, it's got to be true. <laughs> well, I'll never argue that. Uh, I would check the time, <laughs> but the sun's high. We got another test. Yes, we do. Come follow me across the wide Missouri. As I implied, of course, the tests that we're doing right now is from a movie called Across the Wide Missouri. Clark Gable, Ricardo Montalban. One of those big Technicolor Cinemascope epics that I love those. Yeah, I love those too. And of course, in this one, Clark Gable is a trapper or frontiersman who goes out into the wilderness in search of beaver. We've all done that. And of course, Ricardo Montalban, as the Native American Indian, takes umbrage with this invasion of his territory. As he should. And they wind up in kind of a mano a mano battle. Very yeah, exciting. Yeah, big fight. Uh, Gable gets off a shot, and as he's frantically reloading, Iron Shirt sees the opportunity and rushes him. And he rushes him so quickly that the Clark Gable character sees no other choice but to fire off his rifle with the ramrod still inserted in the barrel. Yeah, and the ramrod leaves the gun and actually penetrates Ricardo Montalban halfway out, and it kills him. And I love that scene because it's quiet. The music, the music stops, and all you hear are them breathing and working the gun. Very frantic. Fan suggestion. Absolutely, and it's a really, really good one. Clark Gable, of course, uses what appears to be a Hawken rifle, like this one. Very popular rifle with the frontiersmen at the time good to about three, 400 yards. And of course, it was commonly made in 50 or 54 caliber. It's a beefy gun. It is indeed. So shall we load up a rod here and yeah. see what we can do? I'm going to need a little help because I'm firing from the hip. <laughs> and remember, this is a double set trigger. So you have to make sure you set the first trigger, and then you're ready to go for the second one. Of course, going to full cock. And that was really a hair trigger. Hair trigger, you, it was it. made that way for a reason. OK, so go to full cock. Full cock. Set the trigger, but don't touch the front one yet. Yep. OK. And I would come a little bit left, a little bit left, right there. How's my height? Hang on one second. We shall check. I would go down maybe an inch. That's good right there. And uh, fire when ready. Well, I'm pretty tuckered out after all this testing of your favorite westerns. And to top it all off, Larry's got a surprise up his sleeve. That's good right there. And uh, fire when ready. I, I did not. Did you expect this? I didn't expect it. Yeah, I mean, not only did we hit the target, 
but it's exactly like in the movie. It's Equal perfect. distance from either side, the guy just got skewered through and through. Amazing. Wildly successful test. You can use a ramrod from a hawker rifle to take a guy out. I wouldn't want I to do it. I wouldn't <laughs> use it as a practice <laughs> technique, but in a pinch, yes, you could do that. Absolutely amazing. Well, dude, this has been a great day of tests, yep. so thanks for setting whoa, it Whoa, 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 whoa. Day's not over yet. It ain't? No, it ain't. I got another test for you. You do? I do. What is it? It's a bit of a surprise. No, 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 no. You got to give me a hint, man. I guarantee you, you'll think that it's magnificent. Not enough. Give me a scale, one to 10. Mm, seven. So it's a seven, and it's going to be magnificent. Jesse, good to see you, hey. man. It's been a couple years. It has. Last time I was here, we shot a stick of dynamite. Yes, we did. Larry, are we going to blow something up today? Well, we're going to try. In the 2016 remake of the film Magnificent Seven. Magnificent Seven. Chris Pratt rigs a remotely detonated device. He takes a bottle, hangs it on a shed. It's full of nitroglycerin. When the bad guy comes by, he triggers it by shooting at it with his shotgun, and boom. A couple things. A, love that scene. And two, I love the boom. Jesse, is this going to work? Oh, I hope so. <laughs> Let's do it. Yeah. OK, good. so we have the gun in a fixed position. We're going to be 100 yards back. We have a triggering line. We have EMTs. We have fire department, fire extinguishers, all manned and ready to go. You do what you need to do, and at the last minute, hook up the firing line, and we'll see what happens. So I'll have a little more than half a bottle of nitroglycerin. Excellent. For safety, everyone will fall back. I'll set it up one man down range, and then I'll hook up the final safety before I come up range. OK, I right think on. that's our cue to leave. We're leaving. But I got to tell you, dude, I was playing along because I knew it was a magnificent seven. I yeah, sure yeah, you yeah, did. Yeah, yeah, I did. Sure you did. It's like Christmas, New Year's, and Hanukkah all year long. <laughs> <laughs> well, there'll definitely be some candles and fireworks, that's for sure. All right, bro. So what are we shooting at this? So in the movie, of course, they didn't specify exactly what he's shooting. Shotguns, the unique thing, like we said, is you can shoot birdshot, you can shoot solid slug. So we're going to shoot a solid slug to give us the best chance of success. That'll give a better chance of like this sort of like that kinetic energy fracturing and then Slug has a lot more energy than birdshot or even than buckshot. 100%. It's going to crack the barrel real good. OK. OK? Yeah, man. My man. All right, gentlemen. <laughs> Ready to go? <laughs> we're good to go. OK. Hey, got a viewing spot right there behind the protective shield. Getting close. Yeah. There's a lot of weight in the line itself, believe it. Shotgun. Clearly, yeah. the nitro has been cleared. That's all gone away. Uh, did this happen the way you thought it was going to happen? Oh, yeah. <laughs> More importantly, it happened exactly the way it did in the film. That's right. Took away the shack, and if there had been a bad guy there, Done. he'd have been toast. So perfectly, perfectly executed test. Jesse, every time I run into you, stuff like this happens. Thank you, and I look forward to the next time. I know when you guys call, it's going to be a blast. Larry, my man. Thanks, brother. That was great. Come on, Jesse, let's go clean up this mess. Yeah, well, reckon I gotta find another place to shack up. Well, there you have it. Another Western compilation put to the test. I'd like to thank Larry, Jesse, and the team for making it fun and eminently safe. As always, what did we learn today? A flask won't stop a bullet, but a pocket watch could save your life. Marty McFly had it right. A cast iron stove door could stop a bullet. Firing a ramrod from a Hawken rifle worked exactly like it did for Clark Gable. No surprise. 
And shooting a bottle filled with nitroglycerin was just as devastating as it was in the movie. When I think of movies, I think of America. And there's nothing more American than a Western. The theme of good versus evil and the drive for justice to prevail. A perfect metaphor for American ideals. So if you're watching a scene from a TV show or movie and you think to yourself, can you really do that? Reach out to us. Maybe we'll make that happen. Oh yeah, and by the way, if you plan on mixing flux capacitors and guns, be careful. You want to ride? Uh, no, 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 no.